Okay, now, next, and I'm going as fast as I can, so let's use blue. So study the diagram of the ear below. Uh, 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 this, this was, mm, Jezu sent this in. Okay, now, I'm, I'm, labels, you guys need to learn your labels. Which part of the brain receives impulses from C? Um, C is the cochlea. It's uh, going to it's going to be the cerebrum. Because remember, the cerebellum is for balance. The role of the now this this here is important. Okay, so describe the role of the semicircular canals in maintaining balance. Because really, labels you must know your labels. Learn, learn all your labels. Okay, now let's do our semicircular canals, and uh, all about maintaining. Balance. So the first thing you're going to say is the cristae um, in the semicircular canals are stimulated by changes. in speed, and this is important, in speed and direction. So in other words, how fast you are moving, so speed, that will be fast, and the direction you're going in. So the minute you change direction like a dancer does, when they're doing twirls, and they spin their heads around quickly, that's to stop their semicircular canals from causing issues. All right, so it's the cristae in the semicircular canals that are stimulated by changes in speed and direction. Okay, that's number one. Um, then cristae convert. Because remember, these are, are, are uh, uh, mechanoreceptors. So the cristae convert... Um, the stimuli into impulses. Okay, now once the impulses are there, um, uh, uh, oh my goodness, nerve impulses are transferred, or you can say transported. Along, in the ear, we've got the auditory nerve. Okay, and they're transported along the auditory, auditory nerve to where? To the cerebellum. Okay, so you've got the cerebrum, and then you have the cerebellum sitting here. There's your cerebellum. And your cerebellum is for balance and equilibrium. That's what's important. All right, so to the cerebellum, okay, and um, impulses are interpreted, okay, and impulses are sent um, to the muscles, which are your um, effectors. They are what is affected, your effectors, to restore balance. Okay, people, you have to know this. So let's get our yellow. It's the cristae that are in the semicircular canals. And when they are stimulated by the changes in speed and direction, that's what makes them change. So now, what do they do? They convert the stimuli into impulses. Right now, doing converting the stimulus into impulses, let me just put in brackets here, they are receptors. Okay? And they convert stimuli into impulses. The impulses are travel along the auditory nerve where to the cerebellum. Impulses are interpreted and impulses are sent to the muscles, which are the effectors, to restore balance. Done, done, dusted. Boom, boom, boom. 
Very, very important. Okay, let's just see what the other questions were. Describe how an increased production of mucus in the nose and throat may lead to a bursting eardrum. Okay, I'm going to quickly show you. Um, this here is your eustachian tube. Eustachian tube. Okay. And this eustachian tube makes sure that you've got air here and you've got air here and that that air is equal, all right, that it's balanced, the pressure, um, equal pressure. So when you've got a blocked nose and a throat, you get this clogged up with mucus, okay? You also end up with, with your glands here swelling, and that also, if your glands here swell, they also close that eustachian tube. So what happens? This pressure increases, jinks, it goes up. And it is not, it is no longer balanced. So you've got pressure pushing on this eardrum this way. And that can cause the eardrum to burst. Or tympanic membrane bursts. Okay, so it's when this pressure here is not maintained. Your eustachian tube must remain open to allow that to happen. And that is why um, with little kids, their eustachian tube is very short. So the minute they get a, a, um, a throat infection, those, all those bugs go bitty, 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 and go up into the, the middle ear, and it causes an infection there. And how does our body respond when it's infected? It starts to make mucus. And that mucus blocks up the eustachian tube, and it causes incredible pressure, and that's why little kids scream like they do when they have an ear infection. Okay, last question. Let's just quickly check. Explain why fusion of the structures at A may lead to hearing loss. People, those that these semicircular canals amplify sound. Okay, so when they are fused, they're not going to vibrate very nicely, so they won't amplify sound. So a nice vibration is not going to pass into the, 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 the um, inner ear, and your cochlea is not going to be stimulated nicely, and your hearing is going to be impaired. All right, done, done, dusted.